Hello everyone and welcome back to my career Let's Play slash tutorial in Kerbal Space Program 1.4.3 and in this episode we're going to fill the temperature survey missions around the moon and Minmus and then also explore Minmus which includes rendezvous of two vessels in orbit of Minmus. We've basically done these sorts of things before so I'm not going to belabor it. Our goal is simply to get uh, money from the contracts in order to unlock the VAB unlock the uh, tracking station potentially, but also get uh, some more science so that we can uh, unlock the new technology so we can communicate to other planets. So we need that in particular and uh, we should get all of it with this. Uh, we're just going to be sending science juniors to the surface of Minmus and trying to bring them back. We're going to do two of these missions because we need to do the rendezvous and the rendezvous uh, bit of the Explore Minmus contract has to be with different vessels. So it can't be the same vessel, it can't be the same launch. Uh, so that is the catch there. But otherwise it should be fairly straightforward, let's hope. I've got a fair amount of Delta V here. Let's see what happens. So two launches of this. It's not the most aerodynamic thing. We still haven't unlocked fairings yet. That would make it a lot better as far as aerodynamics is concerned. And until we do get fairings, since I'm using non-gimbling engines on the outside, Oh wait, I, I actually have the swivel on the outside on this rocket. Hmm, maybe I can leave off the fins. I think uh, if we're going to use swivels on the outside, I can leave off the fins. Maybe I should just swap those for... No, that's enough thrust to weight ratio. I, I think I'll, I'll keep it... Uh... Yeah, this will be fine. Okay, so we'll go with this. If, if this doesn't work, we'll just launch with fins. We have to do a second launch anyway. Here we go. Okay. Then we've got 100 ablator on the heat shield for the return part of the pod. And we're going to the moon first with this. The other one we'll send directly to Minmus. Okay, we're past max Q and we're about to separate the boosters. Off they go. And we are ex still accelerating, so that's good. Well, I didn't put a whole bunch of antennae on here, because that's extra mass. But, on the other hand, as long as we get into orbit, it's not that sensitive. But yeah, uh, we don't have one of the relay antennae, and we certainly don't have eight antennae on here. To communicate with our geosynchronous satellites. I'll aim for 100 kilometers to give us some time to reacquire if we lose communication. So that'll toss us up a little bit more. These are the the surface attach commutrons, and that's because we don't want them snapping off on the way back down through the atmosphere. But we've reacquired, so that's just gonna be how it's gonna be. We'll have to uh, plan for higher orbits to make sure if we're carrying fewer commutrons or not carrying a relay in tonight. Okay, well that is orbit, and we still have 4,000 meters per second to do what we need to do. And the first thing we need to do is head over to the moon to get those temperature scans. So let's do that. Uh, about 45 degrees over here. We'll make our burn like that. Maybe a little bit further. Again, I uh, move the maneuver node until I see that it's sort of pulling away from the moon. It's sort of pulling away from the moon there. I think basically this is optimal, but it's crashing into the moon, so we don't want that. And it doesn't matter which way around the moon we go, because we're trying to hit particular locations. And this is actually a double encounter with the moon. Uh, the second encounter would toss us out of the system, but we're not going to be doing that. If we take a look at where we need the temperature scans, they're pretty close to the to the equator, so that's not going to be too hard. The only question is whether we'll have communication when we need to do the burn. But even if we don't, we can do it about two minutes after the burn point and probably still reach the moon just fine. So, we're going to have to keep in mind contingencies for lack of communication. Unless I want to make a low-level set of uh, 
I could make a secondary set of communication satellites that will be low level and only require the probes to have two. As long as those satellites stick within 1,000 kilometers of the surface, or less actually, it'll have to be 700 kilometers from the surface, about 700 kilometers from the surface, and can communicate to the geosynchronous satellites, or these, the, com the original comsats, then it should be okay. I'll give that some thought. We don't have probe control right now. So we could solve that problem and uh, not require eight uh, commutrons or otherwise a relay antenna. But really I'm going to be going on to interplanetary missions pretty soon. And otherwise most of our Moon and Minmus activities will be with crew. So I don't know that it's that important to set up that secondary communication system. Okay, so we're on our way to the moon, 14 kilometer periapsis. Now, of course, as long as we can have line of sight with any of the ground stations, we're all right with two antennae. It's only when we don't have line of sight and we need to relay through another antenna that we have the problem. It's important that we plan all our maneuvers while we're, we'll be in communication with Kerbin. Of course, on this opposite side, it's not going to work out. Also, on this side, we need to be above 10 kilometers, basically, and that's fine. That's easy enough. Above is a heck of a lot easier than below. Okay, so right around here, we're about... We're actually past 90 degrees away from... No, uh, actually... About 90 degrees. So I'm going to tilt up here uh, to hit the first spot, which is right there. And we need to also make sure that we don't increase our height too much. Okay, so node me please. But we're in it for the funds mainly. Though I, I need science, but that's mainly Minimus stuff, landing on Minimus and getting those science juniors back. Okay, we are entering Sid Pont Stupidity. Well, okay, we collected survey data for it. Now, Werner's Precipice. That must have been some profound stupidity. I want to know how Sid Pont earned that uh, particular landmark. Okay, so now, again, we want to do inclination changes at the equator, also far away from the planet, but that's not an option right now. But uh, so now we only have one point to choose from, and but that should allow us to hit both of those thermometers, temperature scan locations. Okay, Werner's precipice, a lot of temperature. Okay, we got that. And finally, Franwig's Shadow. We are entering, yes. Okay. That does it for that contract. So, contract fulfilled. I don't suppose log, temp no, log pressure doesn't do anything. Okay, so this just needs to get over to Minmus. And it'll just wait for the other probe to do the temperature scans at Minmus, and then they'll rendezvous with each other. Because this array used some extra fuel to do the temperature scans here. We needed to send two anyway because you can't do rendezvous otherwise. So we might as well put the other one to use as well. And then they'll both land on Minmus to get the Science Junior data. And bring it back home. Will that get us the 60 signs that we need? I'm not sure. And here we get... We go have to go a little bit past, but we get a little encounter over there. That's that's sufficient. I think we'll be fine with that. It's sort of an off-plane transfer. We're not correcting inclination with Minmus. And while this is on its way, we can launch the second one. So how do you transfer from the moon to Minmus? Basically the same way you transfer from Earth orbit to Minmus. 
not Earth orbit, Kerbin orbit. Um, it helps that we're pretty close to this descending node right now. Otherwise, you will have to do a mid-course correction to correct the inclination. If you're not close to the ascending or descending node, you can't do an off-plane transfer. The moon itself has to be close to those locations. If this descending node was over here, there's no way we would have gotten this encounter like that. And in that case, we'll have to do a mid-course adjustment uh, around here-ish, because that's where I said the descending node is. And... Uh, then correct the inclination and then hit minimus. Okay, bit late for a burn. That's good enough for me. Uh, I'll add that SOI change as an alarm. Well, actually this is showing the SOI change between the moon and Kerbin as we exit. So I'll just add a maneuver here after 24 days and have Kerbal alarm clock take that alarm. Okay, so now it'll warn us once we get there. Uh, Communication-wise, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I, I don't know if we have communication all the way out here. Maybe it's going to be tough for Minmus. We'll see. Seeing how much extra Delta V we had on the previous mission, I decided that it'd be a good idea to turn this this stage right here into a Minmus relay. So we're carrying an extra core here. That's not the core. Um, behind the batteries is the octal core. And we're carrying two relay antennae and some extra solar panels on this stage. This stage will of course remain in Minmus orbit while this will return back to Kerbin. I've also added extra little antennae here. Um, that's just a hope. I'm not entirely sure it's gonna do too much. But yeah, I think that'll be a good idea. We'll call this sample return three. And all we need to do is make sure that this arrives at Minmus before the other one, which should be easy because the other one's sort of in an awkward orbit that goes way past Minmus orbit and comes back around. And we know the timing of that, 24 days. So all we need to do is beat out that 24 days. And then we'll be ensuring that that mission has communication when it arrives. Uh, ensuring is a strong word because that still has only a thousand kilometers with a range uh, to reach a relay uh, antennae like this and basically Minmus SOI is about 2,000 kilometers um, in radius and actually that's 4,000 in diameter so there's still a possibility we won't have communication we'll see but let's go one thing we can do is make sure that this uh, sticks to a high orbit first, and that'll help. Okay, throttle up, SAS on, and launch. Okay, booster set. Okay, separation and ignition. And we are on the trusty LV-909. I'll go for 90 kilometers in this case. And just in case I don't get these antennae out in time, I don't want to extend them while we're in the atmosphere. Though it's probably safe at this altitude. Well, I don't need to time warp. I need to transfer. Minmus says target. We are communicating through ComSat 4. Signal strength 65%, but better than zero. Now, the ascending and descending node are in somewhat awkward locations, but can we get there in 24 days is all we really care about. 23 days. Well, I'll take it. That's fine. Let's fine-tune that just a little bit. Oh, I haven't made orbit. Oops, forgot about that. Well, we can certainly make use of serious Oberth effects if we <laughs> want to, but we're on the wrong side of things. I don't think we'll burn up at this altitude. We just have to time warp really slowly. And we'll have to replot, but we'll have to do that after it brings down our orbit because we're passing through the atmosphere. Uh, well, we'll see the tolerances of these antennae, the high gain antenna. Okay, I've replotted after passing through the atmosphere accidentally, but we still have our Minmus encounter, and it's faster even. And not only that, if we didn't decide to go to Minmus, we could accidentally hit the moon as a bonus. 
but uh, we will be going to Minmus. And let's do this this time. Okay, well, somewhat different result here. But we still have a Minmus Periapsis there, so I will take it. It's rather a freer return trajectory than I'd normally like, which means that it's coming back to Kerbin and crashing into it. But, alright, let's go with it. We can see the path of the other sample return mission and hitting Minmus over here. Here we're actually going a little bit further out, delaying us a bit. Minmus is still all the way over there, so it needs to catch up. We actually almost rendezvous over here. No, <laughs> not quite. Rendezvous are a little bit closer and require you to match velocities. Not dock though, we don't have docking ports yet, so they couldn't ask us to do that. Okay, so we are now here, and I, I don't want to get into a particularly tight orbit. We might have to adjust our orbit to make sure that we maintain... Actually, you know what? Mimus Sample Return 2 seems to be communicating just fine with Kerbin, so we don't have to worry about that. Let's focus on Minmus and see where these... They're sort of all over the place anyway. But let's get closer to... Uh, no, I'm right, radial negative to get closer to Minmus. And what do they want as far as altitudes? Above, 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 and it looks like minimum is 7.3 kilometers. So we'll just get into a 10 kilometer-ish orbit. This inclination is fine, they're sort of in inclined locations. And we will probably need to do many adjustments. Okay, well that periapsis is a little bit low, so let me do a radial burn to adjust this. Okay, that'll do, that'll do. Alright, so that's like that, and now we'll focus on this mission to get into a compatible orbit. It's still communicating just fine. Signal strength 65% on just two cominotrons. Swear. It's amazing what cominotrons can do as long as they have line of sight. So if we just want to correct everything in one fell swoop, we add a maneuver here. We've got a 117.2 degree difference. So just to recap, I did retrograde first and then did the inclination correction. But because we're doing such a huge inclination correction, it starts to be the case that the retrograde marker affects the inclination. It's not isolated anymore. So you can see when I pull the retrograde marker, the descending node changes. And Conversely, when I tug on the normal in inclination marker, our orbit starts to descend. This has to be timely because we're crossing the target orbit. We really would have wanted to do like the entire burn right at that spot. That's not happening, but we'll do our best. This is only a reasonable idea because this is Minmus and its gravity is low and orbital velocity is low, so the inclination change doesn't cost that much. Otherwise, this would be a bad idea to change the inclination like this. You'd rather do it at a high position. Okay, well, we have a few more things to do to actually make a rendezvous. First, I want to bring the periapsis down and adjust our inclination. We'll do both here. If we have communication. Otherwise, we'll do it at the descending node. Communication is cut off. And we have no relay. So, okay, maybe not. Um, maybe we'll just bring down the periapsis first at apoapsis. Uh, that's a little bit lower than I wanted. Remember, the first goal is to just have a tangency to the orbit that you're targeting, and that means just touching the orbit at one point. Here, we're 
not really touching the orbit at any point because we've got the inclination, but in principle we're crossing here and here. So I would like not to cross at two different points. Just one point will do. Here or now it's only reading one point, which is right there. And then at the descending node we will correct the inclination. And finally, at this periapsis we can phase with it by bringing the orbit down. We may have to wait one orbit because it looks like it's uh, too far out in front of us and we're going slower because we're in the higher orbit. Okay, well what I'm going to do is bring up Megjev's rendezvous planner, well, rendezvous window, and just sort of minimize once we reach periapsis. And we see close approach distance diminishing in the Mechjeb window. And again, that's why I have it, because you really can't see that from out here at all. And it shows a separation 118.2. And, well, here it's showing a 39.2. So that, that's close. That's basically what Mechjeb is talking about. So I take it back. It's, it's finally showing it. And, yes. Well, Mechjeb says 400 meters. This says 2.8 kilometers. And I'm just going to trust Mechjeb on this one. Though wh why it's going down still, I don't know, because I don't have any throttle on. So, okay, maybe I will trust. Unless the other mission is perturbing somehow, but I think I'll just trust this one then. So it says 0.5 now, and that's stable, so I'll take it. And now to fill that part of the contract, all we have to do is match velocities. We'll be so close, it should be all right. In fact, it already says we've rendezvoused the two vessels. We haven't even matched velocities yet. That's a heck of a buffer. I, I just want to do it properly for my own satisfaction then, because apparently it doesn't care. Let's see, if we stay in this orbit, Minimus will eventually rotate, so. I do want to, I think we'll be all right as far as not crashing into the other mission. That's sort of important. It looks like both of those locations will be under our orbit at the same time, so that'd be nice, but it'll take a few orbits to get there. In this case, I'll just wait rather than trying to do a burn. Okay, this looks pretty close, but is it close enough? On the next pass, it might not, it might be past the location. So I'm just going to change my inclination here. And then past that, I'm going to change the inclination back. Just to make sure we hit it. We should shade a little bit lower because it's going to move just a tiny bit when we're on our way. Looks like we're a fair distance away from the other sample return mission, so that's not a problem. Okay, entering Werner's Climb. Thermometer, log, and it's done. Well, it says 5.8 signs for recovery, but to be honest, we're just going to save that for the surface. Now we have to add another maneuver and bring it back down for the next one. It didn't give me a passing through that one. Like, it might be too high. No, it, it's, it's a collecting. Okay, so maybe I just missed it. Okay, so we've done two out of three so far. Third one's down here. Well, we've got the Delta V. I suppose we all go for it even though it costs a lot. We should affect the landing close to the pole or something. Now, by the time we actually get there, it's going to have moved further along this way. And communication might be dicey when we actually get there, we'll see. So what we really want is to go like that. Well, let's go around first, and maybe that plan will change a bit once we see where that location, Valentina's Cranny? What the heck does Valentina's Cranny even mean? 
Okay, that is done. So we have fulfilled the temperature survey contracts and now it is time to land and then recover them. Now this part of this is staying in orbit and we would actually like it in a fairly high orbit but we'll let it do that part on its own. So separation, switch, prograde. It'll only be able to cover a part of Minmus whatever part it's over, but I'm sure we will come to appreciate its help. So that's sample return 3 and that's sample return 2. Let's land sample return 2 first. We've recently been doing a lot with sample return 3. So this one, this can crash into the ground and we'll aim to do that. And we are in communication. Why don't we aim for this spot here? Looks like we would have communication. So, very drastic maneuver. We are going to pull our orbit up, pull it down into that area. But this is all very possible in Minmus. Because low delta V requirements make that huge orbit change only a matter of 79 meters per second. We really carried way too much delta V for this. Okay, I think that will be a safe place to land in. There's sun right there, and as Minmus rotates, there'll only be more sun. And let's eject in this direction. I think this is a good way to send it off. Now, landing gear. Pre-ignite the engine. 1,300 meters per second, but 12 minutes of stage time, so... We better be careful. We don't want to take too long slowing down. One way we can tell how long we're taking is if we show landing predictions here, time to land. We know we've got 100 meters per second to burn off here. It has a very low thrust to weight ratio, obviously. If we take a look, it's 2.81 with respect to Minmus. That's like 0.1 something with respect to Kerbin. But I don't really want to pull the orbit closer. It, the landing guidance does give you a little marker indicating where you're going to land. I want to land in daylight, so let's not overdo it. If where you're landing is too short and you actually want to land further along, let's say I want to land here instead, you just pitch up. And if you're controlling Smart ASS, you could just increase the pitch like this. And so let's verify if I do that. Well, it's still bringing it in, so we need to tilt a little bit more. At a certain point, it'll start extending it. And you can see now it's moving further along. And by contrast, if what you want to do is go north or south, you can yaw. And if you yaw one way or another, you'll do that. So it's just holding steady. So we have to pitch way up in order to... I don't think we're going to be pushing it along very much. The problem is we're going so slow that any amount of retrograde we do, we're going to be pulling it towards us. And even if we pitch up, it's not going to do so much. Pitching up is not a great idea anyway, because you're going to come down steeper, though that might help if you're not used to landings. Coming down steeper is a better deal when you're not used to landings. The more horizontal one, the shallow descent is good once you've got a lot of experience and that's more efficient technically but it's harder to do. The steeper descent allows you to get a good look at the landscape and make sure that you know how much time you have before you're going to impact. That's not entirely clear when you're very horizontal you might accidentally slam into a hill. Okay. Okay. I think 12 meters per second we can deal with pretty quickly. Alright, I need to physical time warp. It's going to take too long to get to the surface otherwise. It's also handy to have a surface info window to actually get the true altitude here. In this case, on these seas, these uh, flat areas of Minmus, the surface altitude is zero. So that's good. I hope I did that in time. Oh, I might not have. 
Oh, jeez. I might have messed up. Oh, too late, too late, too late. Oh, there goes the surface return. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, we have another one. Jeez. I tell you. But we could, we could still transmit something, I suppose. Ah, oops. Don't line on the antennae. Trying to show how to land, honestly. Kiss of death every time. Well, oh, I just open doors and you do observe. Well, we get 33.4 science even without bringing it back. We only get 75 from bringing, bringing it back. Hmm. I hope we have a, enough electric charge, though. Let me, hold on. Let me tell the antennae um, not to require complete, complete so that we can make sure we get all of it. 33 science. Well, it turns out that even if we don't bring them back, we'll be able to get enough science. That's Elon point four to unlock the technology we need. Ooh, not enough there. We're not exactly in the best position to get solar power right now. I guess we're going to have to wait for the sun to rise a bit more. There we go. Well, it says we received 100%. We're pretty close to being done here. So we got that one. Pressure data? Well, let's wait a bit. Okay. And that should be it. But... It occurs to me we have a rolling option. Can we roll to a different biome? Right now we're on Great Flats. I'm going to try and get up onto that hill. I know this is silly, but it's a fair distance. I don't know. My surface horizontal speed I can see there 3 meters per second. Is that good enough? I'm, I'm, sort, of, uh, I'm sort of going in a circle. Hold on. That's not good. Okay, now I really need to roll very discreetly. I mean, I think it's because, you know, it's obviously not a tire. Let's see if it can roll without changing direction. I need to I need to roll without changing heading. Oh well. I think this this ploy is not going to work for us. But for now, let's try and do this properly. So our other probe landed in this flat. Let's uh, land this one up here, maybe. It's a little bit dangerous, especially considering our low thrust weight ratio. So one thing to do is to just overshoot. And that'll give us more time to decelerate. So here I'm going to overshoot like that and that'll give us the extra time we need to decelerate before landing. So right now it says we're landing there, but let's say I wanted to enter target coordinates and pick target on map. Let's say it says lowlands here. That's low? What's so low about it? Anyway, we'll go with that. And now it'll show us our target difference from that location. And right now there's apparently 33 kilometers between those two markers. We've got more delta V than we need, but less thrust than I'd like. There's also a suicide burn countdown we can go with. I guess we can observe Mystery Gru in flight so that we can recover that one. We've got another one here. Okay, so right now we've killed the surface horizontal velocity and we're basically going straight down now. And in this case, the suicide burn countdown is very accurate. And I really should have been looking at it on the last landing. Okay, plop. Okay, well, now let's do it properly. Observe material bay. We don't have to transmit, we just keep. And the goo container. Keep. The thermometer. Keep. 
and the barometer. Keep. Okay, that's all we need to do. Let's head back home. We'll just go prograde, 90 degrees. As long as you're sure that you're not going to smack into any mountains, you can just point at the horizon after a little while. Okay, the apoapsis is getting a little bit out of hand here, but I... Yeah, let's just coast. 80 is fine. In fact, maybe we can just go straight out. Let's see. I guess any further adjustment we'll have to do outside of Minimus SY. Okay. Should be okay. We should have communication at that location. But we should begin burning a little bit earlier because it still takes like 7 minutes to burn 750 meters per second here. And we don't want to smack into the ground or anything. Uh, it looks like we'd be clear anyway, but just to be on the safe side. Let's start a minute ahead of time. Okay, we definitely did cut it pretty close. We don't need surface info up anymore. But we are safe. And let's take a closer look at what's actually going on here at the turban end of things. 116. And that's pretty much minimum from Minmus SOI right now. So let's get out of Minmus SOI to make a further adjustment. And pull it down to about 26 kilometers. 26 kilometers should be fine. Or 25. Okay. All right then. Let's bring it home. We already have the science we need. Uh, funds, we could do with more funds. We do not have enough to unlock both the tracking station and the research and development building. Okay, there's Kerbin. We should probably begin some operations before we... Let's see, are we going to maintain communication? This is important. Hmm... We only have four antennae. So it might not work out for us. I don't see any ground stations here. There's a ground station right there. Could I, like, arm the parachute? Deploy chute. Let's do that. And then get rid of the service module now. And maybe that'll be enough. Still got communication here. Let's see. We're here. Um, there's actually a location here. I don't know what it is, but we can communicate to that location for a while. That's good. There is an overheating indicator on the Science Junior. Uh oh, closed doors maybe? Okay, I gotta remember to close doors so that that doesn't overheat, apparently. Do not leave your Science Junior doors open. I don't remember that being a thing in previous versions. I thought the doors were like totally ignored by thermodynamics. But not here. We have no more communication. I don't know if we're going to get communication back. Hopefully the parachute will just work on its own. Oh, we do have communication. And the parachutes did deploy on it on their own. Um, it's a tenuous line, probably will have a horizon problem. But I don't really need to communicate with it anyway. With the parachute already out. 
Yep, we have lost communication. But it's looking good for recovery. And there we have it. Okay, on the ground and recover. And I think we might have gotten a world's first milestone there. Or actually return from orbit. I don't know if we've got a return from flyby though. 203 science earned. No crew or anything but parts. Some recovered. Let's see. Oh yeah, we actually fulfilled everything. Uh, so not only did we get a world's first milestone, let's clear these up. But we finished all of the Explore Minmus things, so now we're rolling in dough. Well, still it's very expensive though, and I don't think we can do both tracking station and R&D building. But the priority, I think, is R&D building, because we need that one technology right here. So let's do that. Okay, so now we have an antenna that will allow us to communicate to a different planet. Um, Eve is possible, Duna is possible, Jules is a little bit out. Uh, Moho, possible. So we'll see what we do next time as far as missions to other planets, but that's definitely what I want to do. And it looks like we have an Explore Duna contract coming up. A flyby of Duna, scientific data from Duna, return to Kerbin from flyby of Duna, and um, very lucrative. I think I'll pick that up. So maybe we'll focus on Duna, we'll just time warp to that, and we will talk about getting to other planets. So on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.